My name's Raf. I first started experiencing mental distress in my early teens um, and I ended up in quite a lot of different institutions. In initially I was supposed to go to hospital in the first instance but I ended up on the healthcare wing of a young offenders institution before being actually transferred to hospital. The process to be transferred to hospital from young offenders institutions is a lengthy and complex one but within that process if you're transferred it starts all over again then it's quite a confusing and, and worrying process. Being detained under the Mental Health Act I think there's a lot of questionable um, human rights violations so my personal experience just to name a few for example um, some of the violations I felt were around kind of strip searches in some cases I was strip searched up to twice a day long periods of time in solitary confinement, um, freedom of movement and autonomy, um, inability to practice religion, um, which is, a, I feel, a fundamental right of anybody. Being detained under the Mental Health Act, I often felt kind of discriminated against. So when I was praying in my bedroom and a member of staff who may not have had that kind of cultural or religious knowledge um, accused me of speaking to myself or talking to myself or reacting to voices, which kind of caused that conflict which um, actually re resulted in me not being able to access the community um, on that week. I think um, solitary confinement in any form, however you call it, whether it's called an extra care suite, whether it's called um, you know, seclusion, um, I mean these are all just um, fancy names for solitary confinement. You're in a room with nothing in a, in a cell for um, you know up to 24 hours a day in some cases. At one point I recall spending a year straight in solitary confinement. In my personal case the impact that it had on my mental health was profound um, in terms of um, psychosis being exacerbated, in terms of just not having anybody to speak to. A lot of being in hospital is very coercive. Either you do this or you can't go out. Um, you know, do this or you can't do that. Take your medication or you can't go out today. It's very coercive and very restrictive. You know, trying to refuse treatment in hospital is um, a little bit like requesting to go to solitary confinement or requesting to be restrained or forcibly medicated. I mean, over the years, I. I guess I have grown a lot of resentment for the way that I was treated, um, but that resentment is also um, led into kind of a flame, if you like, of wanting to be able to help change what is happening within institutions and particularly mental health services today.